Feed my people. Haha, <laughs> yes. It's me again. I'm worse than you realize. You just can't get rid of me every time you click on YouTube. Here I am. Now, tonight, it's the long review of the uh, Jindu's Rainforest Cherry Gin. And that should be appearing about there momentarily. Label. So, this is, this gin is just an example of people coming into a country having no idea what the hell they're looking at and basically giving them common names. Um, Rainforest Cherry Gin, I confess, is actually not a member of the Cherry family. Sorry, just going to move my camera down a bit. That way you can get the full closeness. That's me. Um, the the Cherry in can, um, question actually can't, is a member of um, <coughs> the Lily Pilly, Mango, Guava, Eucalypt family. Um, think durian would actually be in a different family either way it's not cherry cherries are actually roses here so they hang out with those horrible plants that i hate weeding around and feel like they're only good good use for roses when you toss them into a shredder but um but so cherries actually hang out with apples peaches pears apricots plums yeah i think that pretty well covers it blackberries and raspberries um that pretty well covers it. So we have got a common name that's got for a rainforest plant that's got nothing to do with the che usual cherries. So we're going to hear the sound of happiness because he's a very, <clears throat> very um, less is more type bottler that Jindu does. Sound of happiness. Now Matt says on the bottle that um, I should be tasting stuff like. Um, Sharp fruit notes straight up with hints of wild basil leading to a pepper combination of boab tubers, pepper berries, and leaves. Never tried a boab tuber in my life. Boabs, I think, are a member of the chocolate family. Boabs, I think, are chocolate factory fighting. Either way, I helped myself to a bit more. And look at the colour in this, baby. Lift it up to the light. It's got almost apricot in colour. Almost a little bit more. Um, the room temperature that I'm recording this in is about oh, it's not about 14 degrees. Might be pushing it to make that. Um, sound of unhappiness. I shall put it off to one side, down to where temptation shall not wander. So it's late winter, early spring. By the time you watch this, spring. Um, Let's see, I am um, wild basil. Matt, can you explain to me what the difference between wild basil and tame basil is? Because if you're cultivating it, it's a tame basil. Okay? Just the pedantic chromosome. Not taste smelling any um, genus Tasmanica in this. What I do smell, weirdly enough, is actually cherries, but that could just be because, well, I'm an SP and, um, well, I do things differently. So. There is certainly a burn there that says that genus Tasmanica is involved. Yeah, there's a burn well above the um, 42%, I think, this baby says on the bottle. Let me not lie. What do you want? Glasses, I think. So, thing that you did as a teenager, teenager is sending you blind. No, 42.5, unless I'm mistaken. Um, so there is the pepperberry burn, there is also the alcohol burn. But, ah, oh, yes, the basil, right on the end. Sorry. How dare I date the art mat and get this baby wrong, considering just how extraordinary these other gins are. And yes, I will be um, mentioning the other gins that you can click on for your viewing pleasure. Um, look, if I think if you really pushed it and you, well, actually, no, by the time this goes there, it's Father's Day will be a memory. Having said that, if you completely forgot the old man and you really want to suck up and kiss the ass, um, reach out to Matt and see if he's got any of this left in stock. Okay? Because if I got my kids to okay, this to me, I'd be a very happy dad. Now, Matt 
that says and he's right up that this oh, oh sorry when I questioned to him it was indifferently hey you I've got a difficult question to ask you yes I was doing that to Matt if you believe that there's a lovely Harper Bridge in Sydney that I'd like to sell you um he said you should actually drink this with a um orange soda water okay so a San Pellegrino or a um cuppy um that sort of stuff personally I wouldn't I'm going to be contrary to that. I would simply take this as it is, which is swimming around my glass, unaided, and unassisted, and unadulterated, which is delightful drinking. Um, possibly ice cold. Um, if I was going to dilute this all, I would make it in ice cold mineral water. Okay, just get it that one step up. You know that tenth of a degree above freezing. Wipe this in. And oh, whack this in. The reason why I say I wouldn't go for the blood orange, um, unlike the uh, Gincello, is because I actually think this is subtle enough to actually get drowned in it. Um, so I'm going to just a little bit of skill on this. I basically know this is way too subtle. And this would get drowned in something else. I mean, there are plenty of drinks like, you know, Absolute Vodka, which really does work very well. You just, you know, it's a base alcohol. It's got its own distinct taste. And I've enjoyed um, drowning my Absolute in Mediterranean tonic water. And it makes it, you know, a very efficient way of me actually beginning to like my kids. Um, but there's, no, I wouldn't go doing this because I would keep very much simpler. Um, so, yeah. I think looking at the camera, I have waffled for entirely long enough. Thank you for watching. Um, and I've got no idea what I'm doing because I'm trying to alternate the exotics with the um, domestic, with the na natives. And um, what I can tell you is that more likely my next native is going to be. Yep, I'll do these guys. HM Gin. And there's is the glasses. Ray Dry. Um, and that'll be two weeks from you see this because I'll go out and find an exotic um, who do. Okay, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. And thank you, my beautiful supporters. You're what helps to get this happen. I'll catch you guys. Bye.